driving, driving up 81 still, and uh, had to stop, pull over, use a restroom. So I'm like, I'm gonna stop at Copart and pick up this element. I was like, let me hop on and see what time his dealer's open till. Because I get there at 3:30 at Copart, four o'clock ish. Been how long it takes? How many trucks are there? Copart in Chambersburg so there's usually not any trucks there but I've also been there before and a nine car was getting loaded so it's really hit or miss you could be the only truck or you could be like one of three or four trucks so I'm like let me check to see how long this dealer's open tonight and uh, I wanted to call my customer have him call his connection at the dealer because the guy I think is like maybe the wholesaler or something there so he probably leaves it. He's probably like a nine to fiver. So I was like, if I get there after five, I want to make sure I can get the keys. So I was like, I'll hop on and see how long they're open so I can be like, hey, leave them with the front desk. They'll be there till eight. Well, good thing I looked and didn't head up there because they're only open till five. So, I don't know. I got to figure out the schedule a little better when we get home. I really need to sit down and write write down everything I have going on right now and where it's going, when I plan on picking it up, and get a schedule like nailed down. Because when stuff like that happens, it just like, you know, it can push, me not being able to get those cars today could push me a day behind, a day behind. You get that to happen once or twice a week, you know, it's only seven days in a week. You know, so figured I'd uh, hop on and say something because uh, I guess I'll be home at four o'clock now. Hopefully, depends how long it takes to get loaded at Cope Park. Show sure you guys that 49 Ford when I get home. At least we'll have time to get home, get that unloaded, get the new. I don't think I showed you guys yet. I just bought a new 12,000 pound winch. I, uh, I had, um, I don't know what they call it, a tractor supply, but the rewards they have there. So I buy, like, all my dog food, because I, uh, my dogs eat dog chow, and they're like pigs. So I get, like, the 50-pound bags, and I'll just buy, like, two of those at a time. And, uh, at tractor supply, it's literally the only food that doesn't hurt their stomachs. Um, but anyways... So I have like all these rewards, I guess, or something. So I'm like, you know, let me compare the price of, I was gonna get a 9,000 pound from Harbor Freight, just as like, I wanted kind of like a mobile unit. Like, I know they're heavy, but I wanted one where like, I just get into like these, you know, need a winch to like pull something out of the garage. I wanted to be able to just stick it in the receiver of the truck and you know be able to use it real quick i just want it to be not not secured to a trailer just sitting in the garage ready to go and i figured i can use that winch for um for like uh the big enclosed a 48 footer because what i can do is i can you know, sh you know strap it or chain it to the to the floor use my jump box winch the vehicle in and then I can move it, like I can get it out of the way. And uh, just kind of make things a little easier for me and have a complete mobile unit. So anyways, I go, I'm comparing 9,000 pound winch from Harbor Freight and Tractor Supply and they're the same price. So I'm like, wow, I, I like the 9,000 pound winch design from Tractor Supply better because it has like, am I saying like a lot? Anyways. It has a, uh, the control box is completely sealed. Like my control box for my Harbor Freight is always what messes up on it, like where the controller connect, connects in. And uh, it's just kind of like a weird design. Like you have to bolt it to the top, but if your uh, winch gets, you know, tangled up, it'll hit the bottom of that. I actually like ripped a hole in the bottom that allows moisture in. So I was like, I'll check out the tractor supply one. And I did that and they were the same price. I was like, well, let me go over there while I get there. And 
they don't have any 9,000 pounds of tractor supply. They're like 319 and then 419 for the 12,000. I'm like, man, I don't know if I really want to spend an extra 100 bucks. So I asked the guy, I said, hey, do you have any more in the back? He's like, well, are you a rewards member with us? I think that one might be on sale. The 12,000. I'm like, well, if it's on sale, I might as well get it. And it was like, with the sale they had and then my rewards points, it was like 20% off. So it ended up being almost the same price as a 9,000. I got a 12,000 pound. Yeah, it's heavy as crap, but I got the, uh, the mounting plate for it, like with the handles. So that should work well. So we're gonna get that set up. I'll show you guys that tonight. But uh, if any guys are looking for winches, uh, check out Tractor Supply. I'll see how I like it and uh, I'll get back to you guys. I'm really confused right now. Key, for those that you don't believe, RAM, key, only key I have. Truck still running. Key. I didn't know the key could come out. I thought I turned it to the left and went to pull it out real quick. See, I turned it back. Maybe when it's only when it's running. Oh, see, it locks in there. That's what I thought. Huh? That's a new one. See. I was the only truck here. I just picked up this element I forgot to pick up. Should have got it. Guy called me last Friday, so I had to pay 30 bucks of storage out of my pocket. It's no big deal. I forgot. It's my fault. Let's get her strapped down and get back to the house. So the plan's gonna be. Uh, I'm actually going to be home at 3.30. plan is going to be to run inside and spend probably, depending on if the baby's awake or not, an hour or so with the family. And then I got to get just stuff shuffled around that I'd already explained. Um, but I was saying about that code part, I was in and out from the time I parked my truck. That was still running with no key in it. To the time I pulled out of there was 15 minutes so it's a local co part to me I think it's like seven miles down the road from my house and uh, they know me my name I'm in and out guy loads it however I want it and uh, we're on the road so we'll back this into the yard because the snow should be melted enough on my second driveway back this into the yard and then I don't know if we'll unhook Maybe we'll just take the Ford tomorrow. Ford's still at my house, so the F-350. So maybe we'll take that tomorrow with a single car enclosed. But... Crazy how the day turned out. 45 degrees right now. Beautiful compared to the way it was this morning. But take a look at how high this drift is here on this right side. The drifts I was talking about. It's probably five, probably doesn't show up very well on camera. It's probably five to six feet high. Huh. Maybe this was a bad, <laughs> bad spot to park. Huh. Got all kinds of stuff here tonight. Peekaboo. Hold on, let's get you some light. Say peekaboo. Well, there it is. Our backed enough in the garage here. Let me get back here so you guys can see it. It's 1949 Ford. All original. Been sitting inside for. I think 70 some years it's been stored inside. A little dirty, been passed around in the family. Oh, good morning guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're in the Ford. We 
we are in the F3, Dad's F350. We've got single car enclosed behind us because we're going to make a pickup. Um, this is kind of why I like having a single car enclosed, is to make pickups and drop-offs with, uh, like this, instead of trying to lug that 48-footer everywhere. So, um, also, congratulations to Daryl. Daryl just picked up a 53-foot uh, Sundowner, three-car uh, enclosed, so congratulations to him. He, uh be doing a lot of work together I guess you'd say it's kind of a partnership or something around there uh, call it what you want but uh, congratulations man uh, he's the owner of the f450 that we took to Texas so that was kind of our um, we've been friends for a couple years now and you know it's time to take things to the next level when finding like-minded people sometimes is a little difficult uh, people who actually, you know, care about succeeding and, you know, becoming successful, you know, not only, you know, right now, but in the long term, making long term plans. Uh, people around my age, it's hard to find. And, you know, uh, I have talked about this before, finding like minded people is tough. So, um, congrats to him. I might pop a picture up here of uh, him at the Sundowner uh, location picking it up. So, uh, we are going to pick up, I'm not really sure what I'm getting myself into, uh, Lewis from Lumel Luxury Transport, uh, actually got this vehicle for me, uh, one of his customers, and shout out to him also because the man collected a deposit, sent me a deposit to get this car, so I knew the guy was serious, and, uh, that's what I like, I like seeing that, so thanks Lewis, I appreciate it man. Uh, the guy's gonna meet me 15 minutes from his house. I thought it was like a uh, Thought it was just a, uh, a roller I think it had You know engine trans I don't know if he's got it loaded up on a trailer or what but he's gonna meet me 15 minutes away from his house in a big massive parking lot Which is awesome It's got a windy driveway and with all the snow. It's gonna be impossible to get turned around so Shout out to the, the customer. I guess we'll see what we get ourselves into not really sure, but uh, whatever it is, we're prepared to take care of it. Got the new 12,000 pound winch in the trailer, um, which I used last night, which was awesome. I got that in the trailer. Got a, uh, a big marine deep cycle battery in my jump box. So whatever we need to do, if we need to winch something in, we got it. So catch up with you guys soon. Well, it's a lovely 24 degrees here. We are in... Uh, Actually in Butler, PA, is where we're uh, meeting this customer to pick up this vehicle that goes to Miami. So, about six miles up the road here, he says there is a large parking lot that we can uh, we can load this in. Don't really know what to expect. At this point, really don't care. I'm already here. Just gotta get it done. All right. Of course, we got more snow on the ground. But look what we got here. We get over to the sun side so you can see it. The flat black. I think it's a 58. Rolling chassis. It's got a nice wood, dark wood finished bed in it. We'll get her winched up in here. He dropped it off with his trailer right here. I told him I was good. He could get on with his day. I'll winch it in myself. But. Now he's got air in the tires, steers, brakes. Gotta love it. Straighten this wheel up. The nice bucket seats in here. Set the steering wheel. There it goes. Got my temporary winch strapped to the floor.
<laughs> I said that in the video and I guess voice command is on on the GoPro and I said it there and it didn't do it anyways it stopped working so I don't know if the camera was cold or what it was but anyways we're loaded we're headed back headed back to the house so some may ask like what's the plan why'd I bring the single car I didn't think I'd be able to get in with the big trailer but he ended up meeting me in a, a place where I could have got in with the big trailer, but there's no use in yanking that all the way up here. I'm going in the opposite direction to just bring this small trailer. And that's, uh, you know, that's what I like about keeping this 24 footer around. I got me thinking, um, you know, it would be nice to, as things progress, and if the enclosed business progresses enough to have, like eventually I want to have a an office, I like a truck I have a truck yard on a piece of land with an office with someone to answer the phone and things like that you know obviously more than just me working a couple trucks this that whatever but I would like to have and be able to offer indoor storage for you know classic exotic cars to the point where I could a store their car for X amount of dollars a day or I could also pick up their car bring it to the storage location and then you know with like a six car enclosed behind a single axle tractor you know gather six cars store them and then take them you know wherever like from the northeast of Florida Florida to the northeast just things like that but be able to offer you know say somebody doesn't have the room and they have like uh, like this project truck and they need to store it for a couple months you know, could make some money off of uh, off of that and you know pay for you have to have you know different insurance obviously for storing people's you know valuables but you know to they could still cut down on the overhead cost of the actual structure you're paying for maybe some of the employees things like that for just using up you know open space so our plan is um i'm gonna get this for, expecting more snow Expecting like another five inches of snow sometime between tonight and tomorrow. Um, I need to get the 48 footer hooked up and get these two vehicles inside inside the trailer. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get home. I've got the 49 right at the door at the bottom garage. There's plenty of room where I can back that up. Um, customer says it's it says it runs and uh, they told me that how to to do something to get it to run so I'm gonna try that then I can put it in reverse back it up and then we'll put this in front of it store them both in the garage because of the snow and then all I have to do is drop this trailer hook up to the other and then get them to the top of the uh, of my driveway in that empty lot to where I can pull the one car in and then winch the, the truck in so just a little bit of shuffling I don't mind doing it but I really don't want to do it in the snow and um, I really I really hope I can get the one running so it's only one in op car it's two in op cars it is what it is we'll handle it but uh, let's get up the turnpike about a I don't know an hour and so away from the house I busted my ass on the snow or on the ice in that parking lot I'm sure the security cameras from that business we were parked in probably got some pretty good footage of me falling um, Went to walk around the back of the truck to change the, uh, to move the steering wheel. It's freaking lost it, so my whole body hurts right now. Anyways, let's get home. So I'm almost home. And have you guys ever fallen on ice and then your whole body hurts? It just keeps getting worse. <sighs> Anyways, I, um, I want to hear from you guys down in the comments below. So. One of my dreams, and I've talked about this before on my other channel before I was really on this channel, would be to build a 2008 to 2010 Super Duty Cummins Swap as a hotshot truck. Whether it be a 5.9, a 6.7, doesn't matter. I think that would be like the ultimate truck. I love those body styles. I love the size of the cab, like the back seat's massive in those. And I would like to put a wheel lift on it, like a repo wheel lift. So let me know uh, 
think all everything might be allocated to do so except for the wheel lift uh, so if you'd like to see like maybe a build series because it's probably going to be done at my house on the lift if you want to see a build series on that let me know down in the comments and let me know what else you think uh, if we do do the build what else we should add to the truck you guys have no idea how nice it is to be able to pull into your driveway I can't do it with, unless it's like summertime and I can do a u-turn in my yard like the yards dry so I got this second driveway that comes in and I can go in this way with a small trailer I don't have to move the four-wheeler, but for now, got stuff everywhere down here. There's the OG Duramax. There's the Ram. We're in the Ford. Let's go see the family.